And I'm sorry, but like that is like a hot steaming pile of BS in my opinion. <laughs> my mom just for some reason was like, oh, you look sexy. <laughs> like, Here, thanks, just mom. One you are my target Here. audience. <laughs> I'm glad my mom thinks I have sex appeal. That's just, one person in the world. I just did Molly's hair and I think it looks good. We're just having a few little issues with the the bangs. Yeah, I oh, there, okay. don't judge the hair, okay? My mom did it. So um, <laughs> she's never been talented with the, with the straightener, so. Oh, one more little bit there. Mom, I, I am going to, it's going to move as I talk. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oh, Lord above. <laughs> That was a dog bone. God be with me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my hair is getting done in one week, so I'm really suffering right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, okay? It's like it's like the days leading up to needing a refill on your nails, or like it sounds like I'm, it sounds like I'm talking about pumping gas in your car refill on your nails. <laughs> if you get your nails done, you know what I mean. Um, or like I'm just desperate. I need my bangs trimmed. Don't I move. Need... Don't move. <laughs> I need my bangs trimmed, I need my roots done, like I need it all girl, okay? So we're not, this isn't the focus of today's video. Um, this is not what I was going to film today, but it is what I'm going to film today because the passion struck. I don't know where it came from, maybe it's in this cup of coffee, but somehow, some way, the passion struck me to speak on this topic that frankly means like absolutely so much to me, but I don't feel like I talk about enough on this channel. So today we're doing it girls. Girls, boys, gays, theys, all the in-betweens, we're talking about it. Representation of disability in the media. Boom! Hot fire issue, okay? Look, I am wearing this jacket very much intentionally. I wore this jacket when I appeared in the Oscars commercial for Samsung. So it's like... It's, a wonderful memory. It's good vibes. Here, let's show the full jacket. I am, in fact, wearing it with, like, That's stretchy okay. sweatpants. <laughs> It's okay, work You're from home. You're only supposed to see the top. Work from home. Where to begin? First off, let me just say that I am simply sharing my opinion. I am not saying my opinion is correct. I am absolutely open and willing and wanting to hear your opinions and perspectives on this topic, especially if you are disabled, especially, especially if you are disabled and work in the entertainment industry. I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. Um, to be honest, this was spurred on by a TikTok I saw like six weeks or two months ago that I have not been able to get off my heart or mind since I saw it. And I've been kind of processing why I had the reaction to it that I did. Now, I am not going to tell you who made this TikTok. Uh, I am not going to like name and shame this person. They're completely entitled to their opinion. If you, for some, somehow, some way, know the TikTok or the TikToker I'm referring to, please don't comment it. Like, this community is a space of love. We, we do not hate, we do not bully around here. This is an open space where we accept and love everyone, even if their opinions differ from ours. So by no means am I trying to bash this person for her opinion, um, but her opinion is the opposite of mine. And I personally feel the rhetoric that she has is harmful and very ableist. And so I want to counter it with my opinion just to get it out there in the world. And her opinion essentially was that this person is, is relatively new to being disabled and is pursuing acting. And her opinion essentially, what she called her hot take, was that if you're a disabled actor and you're tired of losing roles for disabled characters to able-bodied actors, you need to work harder, be better, and you're maybe just not talented enough. And I'm sorry, but like, that is like a hot steaming pile of BS, in my opinion. Look, we know that just for the blind community, it's 80% unemployment in Canada, 70% unemployment in the United States. Do you think all of those unemployed people are unemployed because they're not good enough? Because they're not talented enough? Because they're not educated enough? Because they're not qualified enough? because they just want to sit on disability and rake in that like $500 check a month? No, it's because of society's ignorance, it's because of discrimination, and it's because of ableism. That is why disabled people, blind people, are not getting jobs. 
And I want you to know if you are a disabled actor who's losing roles to able-bodied characters like myself, if you are a disabled person struggling to get a job, it is not you. You are not the problem. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't keep going to acting classes, that you shouldn't keep trying to improve. You should. We all should. We should always be, you know, in our field, like getting the next certificate or, you know, leveling up our education in that field. But just know that more likely than not, you aren't the problem. Society is. That's why this rhetoric upsets me so much because I feel like it is putting the blame on disabled people for able-bodied people's ignorance and discrimination. It only validates to able-bodied people who hear that, that they don't have to be better, that they don't have to do better, that they don't have to open their mind, that they don't have to change. And if that's what we're teaching able-bodied people, I'm scared for the future because we're not going to see the change that we desperately need. And in this video, I don't want to talk too much about the importance of representation because I think we all know that representation matters and is important, right? We see that from the LGBTQ plus community, from the BIPOC community, like we know the impact that positive, authentic representation in media makes on society. And even more so the importance of representation uh, in media for children. And so this video is more so going to be on my opinion of why I think it's important for disabled actors to be playing disabled characters, um, not on why authentic representation in general is important. So I am going to leave links down below of uh, articles about why representation is important for all minority communities. I'm also going to leave some info down below uh, about where I got the statistics that I'm going to share in this video um, and any other information relating to disability representation in media that I think might be of interest to people that are interested in this video or in this topic in general um, that I might not be covering in this video. Growing up, I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be an actress before I ever knew that I was going to be blind. I started taking acting classes at five years old, told my parents that I was going to move to Hollywood and be an actress. And when I was 14, I completely gave up on that dream because after losing the majority of my vision, um, all I saw was the can'ts, the don'ts, the won'ts, the shouldn'ts. I didn't see how I was going to be able to do or be the person that I wanted to be. And I feel sad that 14 year old Molly ever felt that but I know I felt that because of the lack of representation, because I didn't see myself in Hollywood. And that's ultimately why eventually I ended up turning to social media. And through my work in social media, ironically, I've now gotten more opportunities to audition for blind characters. In the past about five years that I've been doing auditions, they have almost exclusively been for blind characters. Majority of those auditions, I got down to top two. You go through many rounds of auditions, to be clear, and lost to a sighted actress for the blind character. Just because I'm feeling a bit sassy and spicy today, I might as well share a little secret that I don't think I've ever really like, properly talked about. Um, one of my favorite circumstances where I got down to top two and lost the role to a sighted girl um, was particularly memorable and painful because I was in fact told while I was standing at the studio lot in front of all the directors, writers, and producers uh, that the writer of this TV show wrote the character fully based off of me and my life story after watching all of my YouTube videos. So yes, I got down to top two to play a character based off of myself and I now frequently, for a number of years now, receive clips, DMs, tweets about this TV show and this specific character being like, Molly, she reminds me so much of you and your story. And I'm like, isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? My best friend Brayden was like, Molly, have you seen the show? She's just like you. I was like, funny Brayden, you should mention that. Uh, I just met Rhea Demiri and she was like, oh my God, have you seen blank show? The character reminds me of you. And I was like, funny. <laughs> Funny, and I would like to state my mom was there as my witness. Oh, okay, yeah. and also they were going to bring you then on yes. the show to be the person who would advise. Yes. So then, when they decided to cast the sighted girl to play the character based fully on me, 
Uh, they were like, but we'll bring you on to consult to make sure we represent you authentically, even though we completely ripped off you, your story, and your journey, and personality traits and character. Uh, we can have you consult to make sure it's authentic, um, but it's in Toronto. And I was living in Los Angeles, and they were like, you know what? We actually decided to hire somebody in Toronto to consult instead. Um, I recently did one audition, my first ever audition for a sighted character, which to me was huge. The fact that I was even reached out to to audition for a sighted character was like a huge like leap in the right direction in my opinion. But I do also wholeheartedly feel that I only got that audition, which I didn't book by the way, but I didn't expect to so it's fine. Um, I wholeheartedly believe I only got that audition because it was for the role of an influencer and I am a content creator. I don't think if I was just a blind actress, I would have gotten to audition for that role. So, and there's no reason a blind actress couldn't play an influencer. You know what I mean? You don't have to be an influencer to play an influencer, but whatever. Uh, this is the whole point of acting. <laughs> I digress. Um, so I've had my fair share of experience um, losing roles that I was perfectly capable of authentically playing to people who could arguably uh, lend less authenticity because they don't live the experience. When we talk about the importance of representation, authentic representation, we often hear people talk about the fact that disabled actors can lend more authenticity to the roles of disabled characters. Absolutely, 100%. That just makes sense. We also hear arguments about how we don't let people play different races or different genders. So why? do we let people play different abilities? It's another argument. When you look back at the history of acting, men used to play women. White people used to play black people. When we think about that now, it's absolutely disgusting and it's clearly wrong and should have never been a thing. And society has grown and changed, thankfully. And so it's interesting that we do still predominantly allow able-bodied actors to play the disabled characters that are depicted on screen just to add a bit of color to this conversation, it's estimated that more than 95% of disabled characters are played by disabled actors. Sorry, your girl was a little heated and misspoke. More than 95% of disabled characters are being played by able-bodied actors. And in a Ruderman Foundation study from 2018, it found that only 56 disabled characters were being played by disabled actors, which includes people who are physically disabled, mentally disabled, and those dealing with addiction. Of course, there are disabled actors who have been successful in breaking through and playing disabled characters, and even some who have gotten to play able-bodied characters, but that is extraordinarily rare. I want to make it clear that just because we can name one or two or three or even five people who have done it doesn't mean that that is the standard or the norm. And you best believe we can name five successful actors who aren't disabled, who have played disabled characters. Um, I will link some articles also about um, disabled actors, like some successful disabled actors, in case you want to follow um, some disabled actors. Every time I find a new disabled actor, I always make sure, or just disabled person in the entertainment industry, I always make sure to go follow them. So show your support. I'll list them some down below that I can think of off the top of my head. But ultimately, I want to break down the statistics and why I think the statistics are actually the most important key factor to look at when we're having the conversation of why disabled actors should be playing the roles of disabled characters. So I wanted to make sure I was getting accurate, up-to-date statistics for this video when I decided 10 minutes before filming that I was going to film it. Um, so I looked it up and sadly, I was very excited because the statistics have gone up since the last time I looked. Now I'm saying I was sadly excited because these statistics are so sad, I shouldn't be excited, but I am because they are improving and that's really exciting. Um, cause it feels like we, the small community that we are of disabled actors are moving the needle, even if it's just slightly. I want to keep in mind going into this conversation that there is an estimated 1 billion people in the world that identify as having a disability and one in four Americans have a disability. Okay. So that's a lot. Now in the U S I'm strictly speaking about the U S statistics. I know they're going to obviously differ in other countries. In the US, three 
0.1% of media portrays disability. That's it. 3.1%. Wow. That's sad. And I also think it's important that we all keep in mind the media produced in the US is viewed around the world. Um, a lot of people grow up in different countries consuming mainly American media, TV shows and movies. So the impact that American made media can have globally on disability is huge with increased representation, which clearly needs to happen. I mean, there is no re like every show, in my opinion, every show should have a disabled character because everything in life has disabled people. And also, I believe that those disabled characters storylines should not hinge specifically and exclusively on the fact that they're disabled. Like, why are more disabled characters not just simply, like, in their wheelchair, at their desk at work? Like, why is it like, Tommy's in a wheelchair. He's a lawyer. Like, can't it just be like, Tommy's a lawyer? Oh, interesting. I happen to notice he's in a wheelchair, as the viewer. Doesn't have to be mentioned, but I digress. So, um, that's just where we're at right now. And then it gets even sadder when you look at what percentage of that is media geared towards children. Less than 1% of media geared towards children depicts disability. And in my opinion, that is the age group we need to be targeting the most because that is when they're young and impressionable. And the younger we can get to these children and educate them about disability, make them comfortable around disability, normalize disability, educate them on disability, we will be able to raise a generation that doesn't discriminate, that doesn't blink an eye. And so, again, this video isn't meant to be on the importance, but obviously I have to touch on it a little bit because it is such a huge key to this issue. Um, but now, Let's delve into it, right? So 3.1% of media in the US depicts disability. So let's, for argument's sake, because that's disability as a whole, the entire community, which as we all know, is a very large spectrum. So let's just say in the case of me, a blind woman, 0.5%, 0.5% is blindness. Now I'm just pulling this out of my booty, okay? Because I don't I don't actually know this. Um, I couldn't find it. If you do know and can find it, please comment below. Um, and if I find it before posting this, I'll link it below. But let's just, for the argument's sake of the video, say 0.5% of the media that depicts disability depicts blindness. Okay, ding, 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 that's me, blind actress. Right, so of that 0.5%, I now have to be looking for roles that are for a blind woman who is Caucasian, who is in her 20s, who is petite. I have to fit all the other character descriptions uh, to be able to even audition for that role. So again, argument's sake, let's say that now ends up being 0.1%. 0.1% of media I am even capable of auditioning for. And then as has happened many times before, I get down to top two, to top three, to that final round of auditions. I'm at the big Fox studio lot in Los Angeles, in front of the producers, the directors, the writers, the casting agents, and the sighted girl gets it. So that sighted white, petite girl in her 20s who could audition for any role that calls for a white, petite girl in her 20s gets the one role that comes up that I could even audition for. And again, you get down to the, to the finish line. There is no arguing that is not about talent. No, it's not. It's about fear. It's about ignorance. It's about convenience. It's people assuming capability without asking. It's about people making what they perceive as the easier choice. And so, the reason that I feel, aside from just the authenticity, aside from the fact that we don't let it happen in other minority communities, the reason that I don't think able-bodied actors should get to play the role of disabled characters is because they have a whole sea of opportunity in front of them. We get 3.1% of media. Could you just leave it for us? Because you best believe 
we are almost never considered for an audition to play an able-bodied character when we are disabled. And even if we are let, even if we're allowed the opportunity to audition, 99.9% .9 of the time that disabled actor is not gonna get that able-bodied character because 99% of the time, they're not getting the disabled character. And how are we ever gonna get a chance to break into the industry when we're not even given a chance to play our own characters? It's not fair. And so if you are an actor watching this, what I ask of you, if your agent, if your management sends you an audition for a disabled character, um, or if you see an open casting for a disabled character, please don't audition, please. I know we're all just trying to make it in this cutthroat industry. Please leave it because there's disabled actors and imagine how hard it is for them to break into this cutthroat industry. If you are an agent, if you're a manager, if you're a casting director, please try to find disabled actors. Believe me, we exist. Try to represent disabled actors. That way, when that casting call comes in for an amputee, a deaf person, somebody with Down syndrome, an autistic person, whatever it might be, you have people on your roster. You don't have to pitch your able-bodied actors. You've got people right there ready to go. It's that easy. And I am seeing change just in the fact that a few years ago, the statistic was less than 2% of media and we're now up to 3.1%. So again, as sad as that number still is, we're improving and that's exciting. I am seeing more casting calls that say things like, please don't submit cited actresses for this blind role. I'm in talks for a role right now, and thankfully, the directors of this production were extremely passionate about hiring a blind actress, um, and were not willing to compromise. We need more people like that in the industry. That's really all I have to say on the matter. That's my perspective, that's my opinion, that's why I feel the way I do, and that is why I think this rhetoric of Disabled actors lose to able-bodied characters because they're just not talented enough is absolute BS ableism and I do not stand behind it and I do not support that. Well said, Molly, from five days ago. I must agree with you. And I think we could probably all agree that going back to the statistic I shared at the beginning of this video, there's a billion disabled people in the world and one in four Americans identify as having a disability, that there's probably at least a handful of disabled actors that are in fact talented enough for the role. Um, but again, please share your perspective, share your opinions. I'm not saying I'm right. Um, I'm open to hearing why you feel the way you do if your opinion differs than mine. This is meant to be a place for conversation. Um, so let's talk about it. And until next time, you can click over here to see an emotional Gallup update, but don't worry, he is still very much so alive. Or you can click over here to see me take my new guide dog, Benix, on a cruise ship for the first time ever and hear about accessibility features for a disabled passenger. Okay, love you guys. Bye.